Globe Warriors. How are you? Thank you, George. Hi, Brock, Didier, Jeff. Money, how are you, Hugo? All my trading warrior brothers and sisters. Hello, Kevin, how are you? Okay, so uh, S&P's had some divergence going into the close and we got a pop. Uh, I, I really don't know if I could recommend doing anything here. You know, one point I wanna make and it was uh, up here, it was this day. Okay, uh, the 30, you know, I was saying for a while, it's hard for me to pick a top like this, but once we broke through 34 and a quarter and VIX closed over 30, it uh, became a different story. So uh, after this day right here, Monday talked about selling 50% um, retracement where old support became new resistance and had this kind of day. Um, I was mainly short the crude, which went down uh, pretty much with the uh, risk off situation we had. Okay, uh, I'm going to give a tip of the hat to uh, Gregor Horvat on that call. I always give credit to people who pointed my eye in that direction. Okay, Jess is probing the long side. I do want to make one point. Uh, the crude was great, but you know, my best trade was this. And Blake helped the community out with this fix call. So I was saying, you know, you buy the 30 calls uh, and it was in September. So depending upon when you did it price-wise, time-wise, you went through some time decay. But as of this morning's open, you have 10 bucks intrinsic value on these calls now. So I don't know what you were paying, two bucks, buck and a half, two and a half, but you have 10 intrinsic plus any time value left. Uh, and I don't usually recommend options, but the reason I did it with VIX is, you know, um, the formation, number one, you know, the formation. Uh, number two, easy to get uh, taken out of futures positions. If your timing's not good, if you use too much leverage, you're not good at stop placements. So uh, really this was a home run ball. And I don't think it's over. I think we could pull back, but I think we're heading towards mid fifties. Did anyone buy these VIX calls? Say about a month ago. And Blake said, buy time. And Blake uh, used to own a um, broker dealer. So he knows about uh, options expiring. Oh, okay, great, TJ. Congratulations. Uh, I think you have enough money to join Forex Analytics now. Am I correct? All right, so I'm going to check with membership today to see if you subscribed. All right. Okay, Jess. All right. So uh, what else? Uh, dollar pulled back to this, you know, you can't ignore this downtrend line. And then uh, last night it pulled back to it right here and here we are making new highs yesterday wasn't didn't think the dollar had much gusto uh compared to the slaughtering of the s and ps but you can't fight it yet and uh, we're probably um you know near the level where you're really going to see some squeezing going on above 9380 94 so uh that looks pretty good um US dollar yen trying to carve out something almost looks like a three drive right here. See this? On the four hour, it looks pretty good. Two hour it looks pretty good. Um it didn't take out this low yet, did it? The 104 level, it actually held it. I think it would have been more bearish if it had taken this out, but 
I'd be careful about being short the end now, especially if you start trading um, back over this breakdown area, 440 again. That looks like a good candle. I think I'm going to go with it. And let's see, uh, I've done nothing in uh, Euro pound. I still think there's going to be a nice long side trade there. And oh, this was another feature uh, yesterday. With all that risk off, you would have thought that bonds would have gotten a bid. I mean, you know, look what TLT did. Still had a red candle with that kind of sell off in the market. So, you know, I don't think it's over. Actually, I think we're going to 2,900 in the S&Ps by Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is for Bears Feast on Thanksgiving. So that's a little less than a month away. Um, and I think that the S&Ps uh, can head all the way down to uh, 2,900. I have some speed line confluence here. And that would be about a 15% correction. So uh, those are my thoughts. Good morning, Monica. Any questions? Any? You guys want to see what I look like during the pand pandemic? Like a monster? Well, I'll wait for Friday because then it's almost Halloween. Okay, so thank uh God. thank huh? God. Thank God. <laughs> you ever see the unknown comic? Oh, All right, no, you'll, no, anyway, you know, you'll it's, it's 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 hard enough keeping our people here so early in the morning and then you show your face and then half the people leave. I mean, come on. Well, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, anyway, you they have get... a great face for radio. Uh, you know. that's such a cliche. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. I have a good voice for TV and a good face for radio. So, uh, no, what do you think of yesterday, Blake? Pretty uh, bloodbath. Um, of what? The bloodbath. Yeah. yeah uh, you know, well, S and P's down ninety. I haven't seen a day like that in a while. Yeah, I mean, we we were down a pretty good clip. I, you know, I mean, I'm not surprised. I, you, you, you know, I've, I've been more thinking that the market's going to pull back ahead of, you know, the, yeah. the elections. It, it was a little bit more aggressive than I thought, um, yeah. but it wasn't surprising to me. Um, yeah. Not, not, not at all. Yeah. Now, um, you know, a lot of people keep asking me, like, you know, how far are we going to go? I, I still think that 3,200 is going to hold us. Um, and and yeah. I know we're, we're only 50 points away, but um, I, I don't, I don't think 3,200 is going to give way ahead of the elections now. Okay. Uh, but, but that, that would to me mean that, you know, it is increasingly looking like, you know, as we get towards election day that the that, tested that, that Trump's going to, you know, pull it out, pull it out of his hat, you know, uh, of, of the hat, you know, where he, he can, um, you know, it looks like he's really, really, uh, you know, getting close and the elections are looking, you know, very close to, uh, yeah, a contestable type of situation. Um, or, uh, excuse me, I'm, I'm sorry, let me, let me rephrase that. I'm, I'm, I was thinking about something else. Uh, meaning that, you know, if it looks like that, that Biden is continuing to hold the lead, then, you know, you might see stocks bounce a little bit. I don't, uh, and I, and I, I, at this point in time, we're putting together this blog that's going to outline um, all the different, um, all the different uh, um, scenarios, scenarios. No, no, not all of them, obviously, but, you know, we're going to outline some different scenarios and how we're going to approach uh, the market and, and um, it, it'll be out by this weekend. So just, just um you know uh stand by for that it'll be good okay i think you guys will enjoy it especially those of you that don't live in the united states if you don't live in the united states it's you know there's so much information out there um and so if if we can deliver you you know kind of a a broad-based picture of what what we're looking for and maybe the possible outcomes uh, i think you're going to benefit from it so it'll it'll be out 
and, and, and Gary asks if, if Kanye wins, that is not factored into our equations. However, <laughs> we should probably be paying attention to it, huh, Dale? Oh, you know, uh, Kanye, he's, uh, he's found God. Guy, man, or something. Are you are you referring to Kim? <laughs> <laughs> and didn't she have a private? Uh, didn't she have a party on a private island? This uh, last uh, that's week. That's the stuff that you would know about. I don't know. I'm, I'm a mere mortal. Kim, who? Kardashian. Kardashian. Oh, I, don't I, get I, me uh, started on her. They had a they had a private. Why party. you like her, Steve? <laughs> I, I uh, huh? you know, I. I no, I don't. What's your language, Steve? <laughs> yeah, What's you your know, language? I don't understand what's the whole fuss uh, around her. I no, I don't. I don't like her. Okay. You know, I, I'm just going to talk from a. I, I mean, <laughs> you know, I'm. I'm just going to say this. I don't understand either, Steve. But I, I have to. I have to. My def, my deep my defense to that is going to be. I've always. Uh, I would say majority of the time, like ninety percent of the time, I've always. Um, uh, dated and married a blonde woman so um th that to me is you know i'm 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 just i guess i'm more tilted that way <laughs> so no no i'm, but, I'm saying a person that has no preferences to you know like blonde brunette Let's, or whatever uh, shall we yeah. move on from kardashian yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah good idea thank you, idea. you know, we, we could really get, especially the market <laughs> let's let's stop for a moment and thank god thank you stelios for being here and, and, oh yeah and, and, and pulling us back from the cliff because you know, we, we could have started talking about butts and all sorts of things so, um, Friend here oh, saying, i was gonna go there next it's so uh, big yeah let's where's let's, it let's so go. big blake well, one of our friends here is saying keeping up with the keeping up with the traders that's a good one <laughs> That's actually good. That's good. That's good. All right. So um, let, let's let's do talk about what's happening in the market right now. now one, one let, let's I, do the bias, not on hair color. Yeah, <laughs> we're going to, yes, hair. yes, not the blonde bias. Let's talk about the bias. The one thing that uh, you, you see that's holding here is the uh, dollar yens holding the 104 level. Really, really strong support. But I have to point out that, um, that you know, the, the yen pairs are breaking lower. So overnight, uh, I, you know, it's it's rare that this happens where I just I put in a trade and it it works out exactly the way that I uh, had thought overnight. A lot of times, you know, I'll get into a trade and things are working, um, and it's working the way you know I expect it to. But I don't get limited out much in positions overnight. Last night, um, I was at my son's soccer practice and you know i'm walking around the park and i knew um the 74 yen level was a big level for the aussie yen and so i figured well you know we have very limited risk here so i uh, i shorted the um the aussie yen at 80 at 79.80 and i put in a limit order at 73.25 because i knew this is the 127 percent extension right here and so I shorted it here with a limit here and I, my stops were just above 74 and I figured, well, you know, I'm not, I'm not risking a whole lot. You know, I'm, I got a one to two risk reward ratio and I'm not looking for a lot, but I know that we're in a bear flag pattern. So, um, and, and by the way, if, you know, you, you use Forex analytics, you knew that this is all the bear flag pattern points to 200 day moving average as well as, as we are well below the 74 level while below the 74 level in near term, we should see 73.23. That was last night's analysis. And I just, um, you know, I, I took the trade uh, cause we were sitting up here at 80 uh, last night and um, you know, I got up this morning and I was limited out. So uh, it was a, it was one of those rare occurrences where I get limited out. A lot of times I'll take a trade overnight because I, I I'm, I'm expecting a, you know, currency to go where I think it's going to go. Um, because, you know, in Asia and Asia tends to push our markets in opposite directions of where they were going in North American trade. So I, um, I, I used to, I, I like to take advantage of that if I can. And a lot of times it happens, you know, as Europe is, or excuse me, as, as a lot of New York uh, East coast traders are heading to bed you know, we see Asian markets peak or bottom around that time. 
and uh, I'm usually up at least slight, you know, about ready to go to bed just because I'm on the, I'm on the West coast, not on the, uh, on the, on the East coast. So anyway, I try to take advantage of some of those situations. The last night I, I happened to do that because I knew we were in such a strong, you know, uh, bear flag pattern. So anyway, I j- just thought I'd share that with you because, you know, when you're looking at this dollar yen and you're like, man, you know, we're really holding 104, but you have to look at all the other yen pairs. Look at the Euro yen breaking down pound yen broken down out of a triangle. You guys are all, if you're Forex analytics subscribers, I'm not, I'm not, you know, telling you anything that you don't know. New Zealand yen, you know, we're approaching the 200 day moving average. Canadian yen broke new trend lows yesterday. And, you know, we're, we're heading down towards these, you know, this 127% extension, this, you know, this horizontal, uh, but th- look at all the downside risk in um, the dollar uh, or in the yen pairs. And, you know, the, with the dollar yen below 104.50 and holding below 104.50, you know, the risk is building that we, you know, trade down towards 102, um, especially if we can clear 104. So anyway, just a little heads up. And so while I'm, I'm, I'm doing this, I might as well uh, go ahead and write this down. 104 is key support for bulls. They're trying, they're, they're trying like hell to, to, to support it. And I'm going to tell you, um, there is dollar demand going into the end of month. And that's one of the things, um, Bank of America is one of, one of the, uh, brokers that we're plugged into um through bloomberg you know we 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 are in touch with not just bank of america you know city and barclays and you know they 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 report back you know what they're seeing and blah 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 so i get to i get to hear you know um a lot of chatter from different banks uh all day long and um yesterday bank of america said you know there's a lot of end of month dollar demand uh, coming through the market right now. And they, they had picked up like a half a yard of dollar yen. This is early yesterday morning. Um, they're like, we already picked up a half a yard and it's early, you know, here in North America. So I don't know if we're going to, but by the fix um, by the New York or the, excuse me, the London fix, that's uh, usually when those, those, uh, those orders dry up. So we may hold 104 for now, but you know, if equities stay heavy, um, the dollar yen could slice through that support a little bit later today. It's possible. Anyway, just little heads up regarding that. All right, so here's the euro. The euro's approaching, you know, this key level support here. Um, this is the support zone that we've talked a lot about. This has been drawn on our charts for you know quite some time. And uh, this lower level comes in right around the 106, or uh, excuse me, 116.90. So we're sitting here at 106 ni- or 116.90. That's going to be pretty strong support. We break through that, and and I, my opinion is, if we break through that, um, you know, we're probably going to retest these lows down here. But there's obviously support of ha- ahead of that. Um, but you can see, this is all pretty good. Um, support through here so yeah right through there I mean actually I should probably write down 116.85 it's better oops Um, hello there we go Uh, resistance for the euro Uh, now any move back up here to 117.60 as long as we're below that there's no reason to be bullish intraday I don't think okay uh, wow, the euro is just getting absolutely creamed right now. Just we are go- we're going to test this support before we before I leave here. I'm thinking um, cable, as you can see, look at the look at this zone um, that we have here. This support zone, resistance zone. I mean, it's been really critical. We've had that drawn out here for weeks too, but now we are approaching these lows and that comes in around 129.15, a break below 129.15. And let's figure out where we can go. Let's take this. 
This is the 50% retracement. So below that is 128.60 uh, would be our next stop. One point two eight six zero. Okay. Um, okay. So resistance is now the overnight highs, which is going to be one thirty um, twenty five. Do we really trade up to one thirty twenty five overnight? We did. Holy cow. Look at that, straight down. All right, um, Aussie. Aussie is threatening a big breakdown, guys. I mean, I, 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 I don't know if I can really illustrate how important this support is. I Yes, I can illustrate how important that support is. Let's go take a look. This is so important. I mean, this is 70-30 resistance support support you know we break through 70 cents and i mean you got to think about this and I, I i want you to think about this from a you know just a dollar pure dollar perspective you know you take uh, a currency like the euro you know if the aussie breaks through 70 cents it's so big um um such a big support if we break through that that alone a breakthrough 70 cents could could send the euro 50 pips lower you know, um, just just as a courtesy move, right? So just think about that. Really important supports here. Um, resistance. I mean, uh, I, I, I guess we have to write this down right now. You know, 70, 75, well, while we're below that, there's there's no reason to be, you know, there's no reason to be uh, bullish. But, it, you know, I have to I have to also argue the, the, the flip side of this is if you want limited risk reward, you could buy the Aussie right now. I mean, look, how many times have we been down here and we, we've supported, we've been supported at 70 cents. I mean, we've been down here one, two, three, four times just over the last month, month. And, you know, so can you get long here in the Aussie? Yeah, you could. Um, do I think it's the right trade? No, I don't. But that that's, you know, I, I have a hard time. And I, I've explained this to you guys many on many, many occasions. I'm very much a directional trader. So if I, if I'm biased, like, like let's say I'm just a, a, an Aussie bear right now. I, I have a hard time trading on the long side. Some of you are really good at trading both directions. Um, I'm not, and I, that's that's a very very um, clear to me, very clear um, uh, weakness of mine as a trader. And it's okay. I I know it. I you know so I I know it. Know thyself, not, huh? Know thyself. Yeah, I know thyself as a trader, so it, it's yeah. fine. You know, I know I'm not a good counter bias trading trader. I'm a good counter trend trader. Uh, just my bias, if my bias is one direction, I have I have a hard time doing it. So the, the reason why I'm saying, I'm telling you this is because I do think that the Aussie is going to eventually break down. I think this is a bearish wedge, but I'm not the guy that's going to be trading it on the long side, um, you know, up here. When we were down here, uh, this last time here uh, was a week and a half ago. I, I I told the guys in in our office. I'm like, look, if you guys think that stocks are going higher, you need to be buying the Aussie right now. It's at seven. It was at seventy forty, and they're like, yeah, you know, that's not a bad. And some some of the guys in my office actually traded on the long side. I didn't, but I'm like, you know, that's. <laughs> I mean, that, that makes sense. If you guys think that stocks are going up today, if you do, you think stocks are going to bounce here buy the Aussie, just put your stops below 70 cents. But I will tell you this, if it get if it goes below 70 cents, I don't think you want to be long. So you have to, you have to be, have a hard, fast stop and don't mess with it. Don't do the, Oh, I know it broke below 70 cents, but I think it's going to bounce now. So I'm going to move my stop lower to 69.50. Yeah. 
And then I guess six and a half fifty, like, no, nah, well, it's now it's really oversold. So I think it's going to bounce back to 70 cents. So I think I'm going to just put my stops at 69 cents. Next thing I know, you know, the thing's trading at 67.50, you're down 250 pips and you're like, what the, how in the hell do I get in that situation? So don't, don't do that. Just know that below 70 cents, things get downright ugly. Is that going to happen today? I don't know, but I, I'm not willing to take the shot anyway. Okay. I'm going to get off that conversation because I could, I could talk about that for a long time about trading psychology and, you know, um, <laughs> that, that type of thing, but you know, the do's and don'ts. Okay. Look at the Kiwi, the Kiwi, you know, we're still forging this head and shoulder pattern. Um, right now we're attacking the, uh, this is, if you can see this fib here. Okay. The 618 retracement is right here. It's right here at 66.18. If we drop below that, you know, that's the 618. The 786 comes in at 65.88. So I'm going to say 65.90 would be your next level support. I'm, I'm writing it down just because we're so close to the first support level. That's the only reason why I'm writing that down. Uh, and while we're below 66.60, I don't think you should be bullish intraday. Whoops. Because uh, I think we got this big head and shoulder pattern that we're building. All right. That one. That was our chart of the day from Monday. I think it was Monday perhaps, or maybe Tuesday. I can't remember. Dollar Canadian. Um, let's take a look at the Canadian. Canadian's ripping, um, you know, crude oil's breaking down. So uh, just talking to uh, Chi, who is, Chi's got a brand new business in New Jersey and he's, uh, so he's not in the chat room as much as we, 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 he used to be, but we do miss him because he points things out like this. He's like, hey, Blake, do you see a harmonic pattern here? And I'm like, yeah, I do actually. I go, are you seeing this? And he goes, yeah, I'm seeing that too. So, you know, this is the dollar Canadian and kind of a good view of what could happen in the next couple of weeks, especially if you think about, okay, we're going to probably have a contested election. That means there's going to be a risk aversion. That means the dollar is probably going to strengthen. That means the dollar Canadian is probably going to, you know, move higher over the next two weeks. Yeah, that's a pretty realistic scenario. We could probably trade up towards 136. Um, we have a lot of work to do to get there, but as you can see, the dollar Canadian is ripping and we're past, we're probably at the 88% retracement right now, which might hold us intraday. That comes in at 133.82. So 133.82, next resistance would be the trend high there, which uh, comes in at 133.82. 420. All right. And like I told you yesterday, a lot of these are on the verge of flipping bullish or bearish, like, you know, the euros on the verge of flipping bearish, but I, I, I can't change them just yet. Cause we are just at, we're pushing range um, levels now. So any dip in the, the, the dollar Canadian back to 132.60 should find support now. And remember, it's down because crude's broken below, um, crude's below uh, 36 bucks. So dollar Mexican peso. Well, we just uh, ripped past the 21.50 and to 21.50 or uh, 21.25 and now to 21.50. Do you... Uh, you guys can answer this question. So you, you can answer this question if you want. Uh, Blake, before the question, we have uh, GDP and jobless claims. So you know what? Screw that. Screw I'm that, not listening. Yeah. I'm not listening. To Actually, that. jobless claims is probably more important than GDP. It probably is. but all not, right. to, not to our president. <laughs> uh, let's, uh, let's take a look at the data. Thank you. Plus Stella, 35%. Even We're all the way back. Very irritated for Stelios trying to get my attention here. Hold, hold the thought. Hold it. Okay. I'm going to. All right. Here we go. I was looking for 31. 35. Come on, 35. Come on, 35. How much time have I got here? Negative 35. 
<laughs> Five seconds. That would be a okay, wash. Here we go. Plus. Okay. It's late. Hello. It's not out. Oh, oh there, it's out now. Initial claims. claims are out. Yeah, close enough. Continuing claims are also very close, so that's not going to move the needle. Let's see. Oh, here we go. Here's the data via Bloomberg. Um, hello, where's the GDP data? My goodness. They're cooking it. I'd like to finish what I was doing. <laughs> I'm waiting on you guys any day. Well, T does TBA stand for to be adjusted? To be announced. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Adjusted. That's, That's funny. funny. That's funny. All right. 33.1%. Market was looking at 32. Um, so it's good, I guess. Uh, you can see it's a little, it's running a little late on data flash. There must have been a hang up there with the data. Yeah. So the market's not really moving um, at all. So, all right. Well, hey, guess what, guys? The market's not moving on data. Isn't that weird? So yeah, strange. absolutely. We didn't know that that was going to happen. All right. So I was going to ask you guys earlier about the dollar Mexican peso. For how many days have I been writing 2150 as being resistance if we break through 2125? I don't two know. Two weeks. Two weeks. At least. At least. Right? So what's the overnight high? 2148.50. Obviously, 2150 nice is still a big resistance level. Right? Still, we... We've been looking at that for weeks and you can see it, it's holding the peso. So now any dip down to 2110 should offer support. Um, you guys know I'm, I, I'd be, I, I actually had bids overnight at 21 and didn't get filled. Um, and I had, and 2110 is also support. So just, you know, same old, same old. All right, dollar Swiss. So dollar Swiss, 91.60. Right, and then support is 9090. And if you guys are new here, um, you guys know we uh do this every every morning with all these pairs. Okay, let's go to the dollar index. So the dollar index is obviously stronger this morning as we push up towards this 94 level. Um, this is going to be big resistance zone as we come into it. So 93.90 to 94, you guys know I've been writing down 94 because that's the upper end of the resistance zone. Support now is at 93.35. And at, you know, this, this is, you could give it all the way down to 93.15. You know, this is all gonna be support. So if you see the dollar dip for some reason today, which it could, you know, especially if like the dollar like the dollar yen has such a you know pretty big influence on the um, dollar index as a whole. Uh, if the dollar yen broke through 104, it could actually drag down the dollar index a little bit. So I mean, you know, if we did something like that, you you have to use that as an opportunity to get you know to take. Excuse me. Oh, I just hit my microphone. Um, to take it as a bounce. Um. So anyway, support for now is gonna be 93.35. Uh, US dollar Norwegian Krona. Uh, as, as you guys know that my chart of the day yesterday <laughs> was- um, Crude. Crude. Yeah, and it, and you know, said, hey, if crude oil breaks down below 36, it's gonna push dollar, you know, the Norway lower, and it did, um, as, as you would expect. Um, since Norway's, you know, they're such a producer and exporter of crude. They, uh, the, the, the risk is because we've, we're squeezing the hell out of, you know, crone longs right now, we could extend those gains up towards this trend high, which is 161% extension at 958. 
I would expect any dip down to 940 to be supported because anybody who sh caught short doesn't want to be short anymore. And they're going to be trying to buy it on any dip. So um, I'm just telling you that from, you know, I know a lot of traders that are caught short this one um, as a fact, because I've been talking to one of the guys that I work with and he's been talking to his guys at the bank that he's traded with at Nomura and um, uh, Standard Charter. And he's just like, do you, a lot of people have been hanging out long Norway and they're caught short now. And we've been talking about that for weeks. And I, I think I've even mentioned it here that um, uh, he's an ex Lehman guy and been at a lot of different banks. And he's just like, yeah, a lot of, a lot of people have been just hanging out long, long, the long Norway short, the U S dollar Norwegian Krona in this risk on environment. Well, you get risk off and they all start getting squeezed. You can see that 200 day moving average is coming up towards, uh, towards that 161% extension. So that, that would obviously cap. If you guys want to trade the Norway on the long side, I think if you can get a move to 960, and you just sell it right there. Limited risk reward, right? Limited risk, good reward. Again, I'm biased, so I, I have a hard time doing that trade in particular. But uh, I know Stelios loves Norway, so that'd be a good trade, right? Stel Me too. I'm looking to reshort Euro Norway and Dollar Norway. Why don't you do it right at the 200-day moving average, like Blake says? Just why don't you do what Blake says? Yeah, a lot of blondes. A lot says. of blondes in Norway, Blake. <laughs> I like, I like. <laughs> Just in case you didn't know, you were planning uh, a vacation. All like, right. Okay. I like um, 980 and 1010. Good. Steve likes uh, well, hey, you know what? Wait, let me finish up and then I'm going to let you show, show your charts. As long as you don't sh show your Kim Kardashian behind, then we're all right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Uh, Cause I can. How do you hide you. it? I can guarantee you, your ass does not look like hers. So let's. Uh, let's thank just... God, no. Yeah, it doesn't. Thank God. Yeah, <laughs> you, you you should thank God. <laughs> I would I would need a pillow to sit on. Uh, okay, let's... <laughs> oh man, that's hard. That that uh, that uh, that's that hurts. I okay, do. Here's... I need one. Here's the here's the uh, <laughs> here's the S and P's. Um, as I was explaining to you guys earlier, I, I had I'd really originally thought that, um, you know, the S and P's were just going to grind lower, you know, this week we, we've actually imploded lower and, um, you know, there's some reasons, but I, I, I don't expect us to really break down below 3,200, not ahead of the election. Um, I'm not, you know, and, and you guys have to, you guys are going to have to figure it out from here, like whether you want to be long or not. I, I, I think having no exposure going into the election is the right decision. But if you're just trying to trade around it, I think the you know best risk reward is going to be, you know, if you can get long, you know, in the 3220s, because then then your risk is manageable from there. Um, you know, you can see we're hitting new new lows. Relative strength is divergent intraday. So, you know, I don't think the market's going to go too far today unless some ground breaking news hits the market which i can't imagine what that would be other than polls are shifting quite a bit which would mean you know trump really starts to close the gap in the polls which i, I think is a very realistic expectation if that happens you might see a heightened risk aversion which could push us a little lower um 3240 30 well i'm gonna write down this 32.10 and then 32.45 is support. And then, and then if you guys are looking for shorts, um, you know, I, I think that maybe a move back up here could happen, which would be 33.40, which is that previous 618 right there, right? Let me thicken up that line a little bit. So, yeah, 3340 could offer some pretty good resistance on rallies. Uh, and let's go to gold really fast. And um, I'm going to reiterate really quick. If you guys um, don't know this, uh, if you didn't hear you didn't hear this earlier, um, uh, we're, we're putting together a blog for this weekend on the presidential election outcomes and, uh, you know, like what are some different scenarios 
think about it this way trump trump wins uh, uh you know uh democratic congress Th that type of situation and um and also we're going to be talking about yeah you bet still um and and we're also going to be talking about you know what's what could happen with gold and 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 you know the s p and the dollar index predominantly and we're going to give you Elliott wave views, harmonic views, technical analysis views. So you're going to see all that analysis uh, in a blog. And, it, and, and if you're not in the United States, I think it's going to be a good, um, because I, I predominantly put it together. I think it's going to be a good, you know, like here are some different scenarios and here's, you know, a trading plan around that. You know, I, I think if you are not in the U.S., it'll be a good overview, easy overview for you, not over overly complicated. So I uh, just want to let you know that is coming. Um, we're working on that and it'll be done by this weekend. OK, because uh, there's a lot of crap out there. I mean, when I say crap, I mean, there's just a lot of information out there and you can really get in the weeds going through all the information. So, you know, we're just trying to make it a simple, you know, hey, if this, this, and this happens, you know, you might have this expectation, that type of thing. All right. 78% retracement in gold is holding. Uh, I, 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 I am focused right now on this 1850 and while we're below 1890. So uh, 1890 and then 1850 is important support. Okay. And we are keeping everything in range because it's pre-election. You can't get too biased ahead of the election. So there's your bias chart. I'm going to leave it up for you for just a second. I want to mention for those of you that are Forex Analytics subscribers, thank you so much for your support. Um, for those of you that um, are not, you should try it out. It's only $1 for 10 days. And if you really want to try to get Forex Analytics for free for a period of time, you should uh, check out Pepperstone Securities. All you have to do is go to this Forex sponsored um, uh, tab on our website. And uh, if you're outside of the US or Canada, you can actually uh, open an account with Pepperstone or you know, um, you know, connect uh, through Pepperstone and uh, get Forex analytics for free for a period of time. So check it out. You have to use this link right here where it says open account because we actually manually have to enable you. It's not like an automated type of system. So, um, you know, once, once you get, uh, once you get your account open, you have to do it through here. We, we, we're, we physically actually have to turn you on. So, um, anyway, we look forward to having you as a possible, uh, customer Forex analytics. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to my colleagues, Steve and Stelios and Dale, so they can talk about Kim Kardashian's, but without we we physically have to turn you on. That sounds a little bit weird, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, that's, uh, you, you said guys, it, you're, man. You're, you're, you, it's you Kardashian. Your, your I'm going to leave I'm gonna leave that job to Dale. <laughs> yes, you guys get to keep your heads in the gutter, I'll tell you. All right, I'm, I'm going to pass it over to you guys. Thank so, you, Blake. Thank you. Right, Good hunting, Blake. Thanks, Thank guys. you, mate. Have a great one. Thank you. Hey, guys. So, hey, how are you guys doing? By the way, we have the ECB in about a minute and a half no change expected but the um the pressure afterwards is probably going to be the well is going to be the important part uh face is going to be over then unfortunately this week the time difference means that we're not going to catch it but it's it's okay for those of you who are forex analytics members you we're going to be in the chat room we're going to be discussing everything um so more risk off and actually, it's interesting, uh, during Asia times, uh, stocks were up, but uh, Asia trading, I mean, but they're coming back down now. And I'm very happy to see metals coming lower as well. Indeed, uh, that was a nice development. Yes, uh, silver is coming close to my buy zone. It's going to be somewhere in the 21s. I don't know exactly yet. I haven't decided it's going to depend on price action, how it gets there. But uh, I'm uh, starting to stagger some uh, buy orders, both in silver and, believe it or not, in some equities as well, but very slowly. Um, and um, so this is really the, the, the big thing going to the elections, how risk assets are going to um, evolve and how they're going to move. And... You know, for people who may, may be unsure why this is happening, well, the, and I think Blake talked about it briefly, it's the, the whole question of 
what kind of result are we going to have? Are we going to have a contested election? Is it going to take three weeks to find out who's going to be the president? All yes. this kind of uncertainty is not good for stocks, not in the short term. Obviously, we have in the back of our minds the fact that every major central bank is just pumping liquidity like there's no tomorrow. Actually, like there's no tomorrow and the day after tomorrow and the day after that. But um, uh, so that as expected, by the way, just confirmed. Yeah, that would have been a shocker if anything. Yeah, happened. it would have been a shocker. Indeed. Um, and uh, so that's happening in the background and that's going to continue to happen, especially if or shall I say, as we're now getting a second wave uh, COVID and uh, more lockdowns coming. Is it going to be whole country lockdowns? Is it going to be uh, localized? I don't know, but it's happening. Actually, Steve, can you take over? Somebody was ringing my bell. I'll be back in two minutes. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, <laughs> so Steve, uh, did France on their lockdown, is it a stay in place lockdown for a month? No, not yet. They're just closing like restaurants and bars okay. and you know, p- putting some restrictions yeah. having to do with the, the hours you can be. Uh, going out and you, you yeah. need like a permit, you know, like like we had in the initial yeah. lockdown here. So it's not like a full, full lockdown, but it's like, you know, just a step yeah. before like that. what we did here in the U.S. Yeah, we did it as well very early uh, in, yeah. in the first phase. So that's why we But you guys had that. a more severe lockdown than us, I think, even. I mean, people oh, were yeah. going and... everywhere here. And yeah. for a period of time, it worked great. I mean, you know, in yeah. essence, you know, afterwards we didn't have any issues. But now, the situation is exploding almost in every single country. One of the exceptions being Sweden. You know, they were uh, seriously right. accused uh, for their handling initially. Yeah. Uh, they had, you know, a lot of dead people initially, but now <clears throat> life in Sweden has gone back to normal, more or less. Um, wow. so it's, it's, so, you know, you know, and there, uh, you know, and that is the way the current administration is leaning towards, you know, just protecting the older people, the vulnerable and let the healthier, younger population just go out there and get it. And the sooner, the better so that we have herd immunity. So it almost I've, sounds like Sweden. I've had a lot of conversation Im- with doctor friends. Some of them yeah, are well, like really... Say, highly esteemed. Yeah. They're, they're not optimistic. I mean, uh, one of them was telling me today, actually, that, you know, there is there is a possibility that this situation can extend for another two, th- two to three years. Right. Not in the same extent. Yeah. Um, but in any yeah. case, what everybody agrees on is that, you know, hoping or believing that there can hey, be... Hey, I'm back. Sorry about that. It's, within, it's, Mur- it's Murphy's gonna... law. You know? I've yeah, been yeah. expecting something all day and it happens in the five minutes that we're talking. Anyway, I'm here. Um, but they all agree to, to the fact that, you know, there is absolutely zero <laughs> chances that there can be like some, some kind of a, you know, solution uh, that will solve the problem within a few months, uh, like two, three months. No way. What they th- say about herd immunity of just letting it go through the population. Uh, you know, they they think that that's not going to fly in where we live okay. uh, as, as as a as an approach. So they don't even consider it, you know, because they don't think yeah. it can actually, you know, it, it has it has enough public support to even be tested. Yeah. So okay. that's that. Okay. You, you're, talking uh, about, you... uh, you're talking about Greece, right? Yeah, but in general, you, most you European have, countries also. You, ha- yeah. you have an interesting demographic here, as in other Southern uh, European countries, that you have a lot of people who are living with their parents, you know, in the same building. Oh, yeah. yeah. So that's going to be a big, a big uh, deterrent. Yeah, anyway. a, lot, a, lot of people, a lot of people are also living or being uh, subsidized by parents' pensions. Add that yeah. to the mix. True, true. Yeah. Hey, did GDP ever come out? GDP? Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, what was it? Thirty-three point one. Was thirty-three point uh, oh in line? Okay. It, it was beat. It was a beat. Yeah. It oh, was a, a slight uh, bit. Yeah. Okay. Slight. I mean, the beat goes <laughs> yeah. on. Yeah, the beat goes on. <laughs> so what else, uh, Estelle? Before we can uh, have a couple um, of... no, that was all I was going to talk about. Actually, I mean, I was going to mention oil as well. I mean, it's just moving in line with risk as well. So I think we're going to be. It's yeah. going to be very choppy going into the elections. I think we have more downside uh, in, in oil risk. playing out the one of the two scenarios we were talking about. Yes. Uh, I think the first area of support of serious support is around 34. I don't really see 
any support for crude until we get to 34 and it can really get lower than that. I mean, my, my target was and remains, my ideal target would be $29. I would really want to get my hands on some crude down there. If of course- I, I agree, 100%. Yeah, if of course the structure and, and the way it's behaving is appropriate. Uh, let, you know, I'm, I'm hoping, I'm hoping. I mean, I, I'm already very happy that I'm seeing, uh, you know, silver and gold on their way to, to to some levels that I consider you know good opportunities to uh, to buy I you know I'm, I'm seeing crude doing the same thing uh, so a little bit more risk off and I think we can you know we can get ourselves some some the, really only, the only problem the only problem with getting long oil is that at the time if that happens uh, it's going to be very costly to buy something without um, negative carry and um, contango. That's the problem. Yes, Just... that is true. That that is why probably once again uh, I I might consider uh, doing it via a proxy, meaning you know choosing some oil company and you know. Yeah, or a currency. Getting exposure there, or, or a currency, which in any case you know USD Nox, since we were talking about it before with Blake, uh, I do think that more most likely than not uh, we had discussed that possibility a long time ago that USD Nox. Uh, would probably uh, post another high. I said that once we started seeing the weight pulled back, I said, listen, you know, I might be short, uh, but I do think this wants to produce one more high. And I do think that the, you know, appropriate levels to find a high actually would be either this support resistance area at 980 uh, or this one at 1010. Be between the two of them, we have the 38.2 at 997. I think anywhere between 980 and 10.1, uh, you know, the, these are good uh, entry areas. And I do believe that USD NOC has more to go to the downside. I very strongly believe that. So, um, you know, I, I'm still in the money. I mean, uh, quite a lot in the money. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll be more than happy to to add more to my position um, once we move higher for the exact same reason, I have no problem buying crude. I absolutely have no problem holding to short USD knock. I, I explained since the very, very beginning that this is a long-term position for me. Uh, so I just, you know, want to keep building on it. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm here in the straight to stay as long as it's needed. I'm absolutely okay with it. Now, uh, uh, since, since we went through all that, needless to say, and since we were talking about crude, you know, the USD uh, Russian ruble uh, is also uh, benefiting um, uh, from this. Um, we clearly saw that the correction lower was in a very um, orderly manner. So it makes sense to have uh, one more push to the upside. Keep in mind that this 8250 area is a very key area of resistance. I'm looking to see what's going to happen uh, from there. Uh, I think there is a very good chance that we're going to have a good reaction. And since we're speaking about currencies that um, you know are correlated somewhat with crude, the Canadian is one of them. But I want to pinpoint mostly here. Blake covers on a daily basis the use of the card here, so I don't want to go over that, but. Um, it's a good idea pinpointing uh, that the CAD yen, if you look at this, is currently testing a very nice confluence of supports at 78. So I do think that a break below 78 is going to be a very, very nice technical breakdown. Um, so I do consider that uh, somewhat of an opportunity. It's interesting also to consider that the USD yen is striving to hold the confluence of, of trend line supports from these two triangles, right? One contained within the other. So as you understand, a potential breakdown here in the USD yen should take with it the vast majority of the yen pairs. And especially as long as we have this risk of environment, I don't believe, by the way, my opinion hasn't changed. I don't believe it's going to last very long. Uh, I believe it's going to be corrective type of move because one way or another we're going to get something coming happening out of the elections and then we're going to get tons and tons of stimulus 
uh, thrown to at the economy once again. And but if, that if, uh, VIX close over, over 30 was a pretty good signal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we've already discussed that. I mean, the VIX. The no, VIX you were was arguing clearly... with me that day. I said VIX, VIX, VIX. Yeah, and if you remember, the first thing I told you is that, you know, we've, we had talked many, many times about these support and resistance areas, right? We had said 25, 30, this, this range at some point has to break. And when it breaks, it should extend, uh, you know, uh, and in this case that happens. And yeah. I, I think, I still think we can see 45. Yeah. Do I believe it's going to be some type of a long-term explosion or whatever? No, I don't think so. I think that once the market gets what it's waiting for and it gets lots and lots of stimulus, the market is going to quiet down once again. Uh, it's not the right reasons why a market should be uh, quite calm and unvolatile. Um, you know, it has nothing to do with the real economy or, you know, any, any type of macro thesis. But unfortunately, these are the markets that we have. Uh, in any case, if USD yen actually breaks down, um, I think that CAD yen can really accelerate the downside, especially you know for as many days as this lasts. You know, crude should continue tracking more or less you know risk, um, and you know the CAD yen, in case we break through this 104 area in USD yen, should be an excellent short under current cir circumstances. Um, so, you know, that's that's what I had in my radar to uh, talk about earlier. Now, let me go through some of your questions, which I'm pretty sure there are a lot. Steve, take a look at gas. Absolutely. So here's natural gas. Uh, there it is. Still looks good. Right. I mean, it still looks good to me. I think that as long as we are above like 290, you know, next upside resistance, 370 something, still looks good to me, both in the short term, medium term and long term. That's what I think about natural gas. Uh, Steve, what about the USD Turkish Lira? Uh, what about it? The USD Turkish Lira is a one-way train. It's as simple as that. And why is it a one-way train? Simply because Turkey has huge problems, the vast majority of which come from uh, Erdogan, uh, you know, having, in essence, be uh, contracted the uh, Napoleonian syndrome, um, and as long as he's in charge and uh, his policies are mostly focused in uh, leaving a legacy uh, greater than, um, you know, Ataturk, I think that Turkey won't be able to capitalize on some huge advantages it has, with the main one being amazing demographics. Uh, so I think that at some point in the future, uh, Long Turkish Lira is going to be an amazing trade and an amazing carry trade. Uh, but I, I don't... You get more uh, carry with the Lira than you do with the ruble? Uh, hmm, haven't traded any of them recently, yeah. especially Turkish Lira. Uh, That'd be I interesting think to know. Should. I think you should. You would... Listen, once Erdogan is not in charge anymore, no matter what it is, yeah. you're going to see rates explode higher. So, yes, definitely the carry trade in being long the Turkish lira up then is going yeah. to be unbelievable. Um, okay. And I, I These do could think... be big trades in 2021. Uh, the yeah, ruble, I'm, not sure. lira. I'm not sure they're going to manage to get rid of Erdogan that fast, but oh. at some point, yeah, it's going to be an amazing, amazing... I'll take care of them, man. Until that happens... Let's get uh, long. I'll take care of it. Yeah, until until I'm that from happens. From Chicago, man. I'll fly. <laughs> I'll fly to Istanbul with my violin case, like my ancestors did in Chicago. That's okay. where they carried their okay, Tommy Mr. guns. Okay, Mister Hitman. They're cockroach. <laughs> I'll say you cockroach or one. I can say one thing. You're you're in a really good mood today. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, why not? Huh? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm saying. Know, I, I, mean, yeah. I am. Mo I am at least. You know, ten percent of the time. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we we have Danny Naz with us today, the pup 
at the pub on Wall Street. Okay, perfect. So, uh, you know, I'm wondering, you know, uh, why, how he came up with that handle. But Yeah, that's uh, a good his, question, actually. Yeah, and it's his uh, first time here. Uh, so looking forward to meeting Danny. And it's time if you're through. Absolutely. Well, Absolutely. You, got... I mean, you know, we can keep talking for like 40 minutes uh, yeah. easily, but... Okay. Uh, you know, interview has a priority, always has. Okay, yeah. so uh, more tomorrow uh, for Forex Analytics members, of course, you know, the day goes on. What's today, Thursday? Yes, it yeah, is Thursday. Okay. All day, huh? Okay. All day long, yes. Okay. So, Danny, I've made you a panelist. I'm asking you to unmute. Very good. How are you, sir? Danny, great to meet you. Thanks Same so much. Go ahead. Here. My pleasure. Yeah, uh, thanks so much for taking time out of uh, the markets right now, which are pretty wild. Uh, have you used Zoom before? Oh, I, every day. Okay, well, uh, you could go ahead and share your screen then. Perfect. Give one second. All right. Okay. Everything looks pretty good on my side. Yeah, yeah, it looks good. So uh, why the handle <laughs> at the pup of Wall Street? So um, back in 2017, I was a uh, crypto investor, not necessarily a trader. Uh, I've been trading markets for probably about eight years, full time for about two and a half, three years now. And okay. uh, there was a there was a, a guy whose handle was the wolf of Wall Street. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I, and I thought, you know, I'm a, I'm a marketer by trade. Um, I do a lot of All branding. Right. And I thought, wow, that's that's a cool spin off of the Wolf of Wall Street. And so uh, when I got into the whole FinTwit, uh, FinTwitosphere, so to speak, uh, last year, uh, of course, as a brander, I took it from that approach. I was like, OK, well, what, what can my handle be? And I went through the whole series of branding and going through this and that. And, uh, you know, I thought, oh, you know, I am from New York. I live in Brooklyn, uh, so I'm very familiar with Wall Street. And uh, I thought, you know what? I'm not quite a wolf, but maybe maybe I'm I'm a pup. I'm I'm a I'm a wolf. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm a pup growing up, maybe to one day be a wolf. And so, yeah. so you're on pup, you're on puppy child, not the real food yet. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And so that's kind of where the pup the pup came from. And then it was just going through iterations to see you know what's available throughout all social medias, and then of course uh, the pup the pup of Wall Street came about. Bounced it off a couple of ideas, uh, some from some trusted confidants, and uh, everybody seemed to like it. It stuck, uh, it, and then at first it was the pup of Wall Street, but everybody kind of calls me the pup, so that that's what it All is. Right. All right. Well, uh, I love puppies. In fact, yeah, I, you know, I really love dogs. Uh, in, in fact, uh, my psychiatrist diagnosed me as a dyslexic, agnostic, insomniac because I stay up all night long. Right. Wondering whether or not there's really a dog. <laughs> All right. So anyway, <laughs> Danny, why don't you tell us about what you were doing, um, you know, before sure. your trading career, what led you into it? Did you have any mentors or people or books that influenced you? Sure. So uh, my journey actually started, I'm in my uh, very young 40s. My journey started in the 80s. My dad was a uh, human resources director and he was an investor, not necessarily a trader, but uh, I used to watch him with his, uh, his lined rule note notepads and uh, when mm -hmm. computers became in vogue, uh, you know, with Excel. And I was always yeah. fascinated by what he was doing. And, uh, you know, fast forward to about 2008, you know, during the housing crash, I had started uh, my first uh, big business. And uh, like I said, I was a, um, come from a marketing and design background. And, uh, you know, I had some extra cash and, and I was already invested with, you know, my IRA and 401k and all that good stuff. And so I thought, you know, let me, let me see if I can take advantage of, uh, of some trading and threw myself into day trading and made some money and lost some money, but got interested, got hooked. And so, uh, you know, throughout the years, I, I dabbled in the markets. And, and like I was saying earlier, uh, when crypto kind of really blew up in 2017, I really took notice of, you know, I made a lot of money and, and I lost a, a good amount of money too with it. And I figured, you know that I need to learn technical analysis. I need to learn, you know, what this whole uh, analyzing of the market is. And so that started my journey with uh, technical analysis and, and analyzing the markets. And so 
Uh, in the last couple of years, uh, I ran into an old high school buddy who uh, was a trader and he saw me post something on Facebook and didn't know that that was something I was into, invited me into his WhatsApp group. Uh, that led me into working with 15 other traders, which, you know, over the last two years, I've really had learned a lot from. And, nice. uh, and that kind of brings me to where I am today. I've been, you know, pre-COVID, of course, I still have my business. Um, business obviously is really tough right now. My, my business is, I'm a glo I own a global design studio. So I do have clients all over the world. I do travel a lot. So I'm feeling a little landlocked right now. Uh, right. haven't been on a plane in about uh, seven, eight months now. And, uh, but you know, what, what's been good about it, you know, trading and, and the stock market has always been in my blood. It's always been a passion of mine. And so like anything else, I've just uh, utilized this time at home uh, while things are quiet with the business to, to really throw myself into trading and to really uh, try and become as best a trader as I possibly can, you know, over this last, uh, you know, eight months or so. And so that's, that's pretty much what I've been up to. Well, you know, a lot of people call me coach and uh, one of my recommendations is find a good community. Yes. Sounds like uh, you did that because, you know, Danny, you and I only have two eyes, yes. but if you, and also surround yourself with traders better than yourself. Absolutely. And, and uh, you know, you kind of rise to their level. So I'm looking at your setup now. Are those uh, turquoise lines, VWAP lines? What kind of yes. lines are they? Yes. So I use uh, TrendSpider. Uh, I've been using TrendSpider since November of last year. Okay, uh, and so obviously Jake. the yeah. anchored VWAP is what I am using from Brian Shannon of Alpha Trends. And, uh, you know, what's great about with TrendSpider oh, is they, they have these uh, automated anchored VWAPs. So... Um, instead of having to manually lock in these, these uh, anchored VWAPs, I can just go to, you know, uh, my highest high, my year to date, my gaps, my lowest low, and uh, it automatically does it for me. So, um, but in this respect, what I'm doing here is, you know, taking anchored VWAPs from capitulation points to potentially get bounce levels for where SPY might be pulling into. So I'm, I'm eyeing this uh, 319 to 323 level here. Uh, we've had our previous low here at uh, 319, and then we have our anchored VWAP from this low right here. Um, so I just really use, I don't trade SPY per se. I, I, will, I will use SPY puts as a hedge uh, against uh, positions, but um, I'm really looking just to see, you know, what, what is SPY going to do relative to the rest of the market? And, and that's basically how I trade. Okay, and uh, we're looking at a daily. So Correct. when we're approaching... Um that uh, VWAP line that you have uh, defined at 322, do you drill down to lower TFs to yep. see if you're getting confirmation uh, and maybe even in uh, Jeff uh, anchored D anchored VWAPs, Jeff Wetzel. Okay. So yeah, you drill down and start looking at uh, the potential for what's that bottom line you have on the bottom that blue line oh this is just a 14 weighted moving average on volume oh, oh okay all right so no momentum indicators at all no and vwap no. it vwap and uh it looks like pattern recognition is your style and volume and volume shelves as you can okay. see we are coming oh, yeah. into a volume shelf right here i'm anchoring oh, volume nice. from from the capitulation low here in march Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I really love these pullback entries um, to volume shelves of anchored view apps and yeah. uh, support and resistance lines. So just to take a quick step back, I'm actually my by trade, I'm more of a swing trader. Um, okay. But because of COVID and, and, and how things have sped up, uh, I, I do uh, day trade and scalp as well. Um, I you know, like I said, I, I don't really use too many uh, lagging indicators, stochastics, MACD, RSI. I will use them for divergence strategies to try and top time uh, tops and bottoms. But for the most part, I'm really just looking at price. You know, as, as Brian Shannon likes to say, only price pays. I, I really believe in that. And so I'm just looking to see, you know, with pattern recognition, with anchored VWAP, uh, volume shelves, um, I'm really just trying to see where price is going to pull into. And uh, yeah. I prefer, rather than being a breakout trader, I do like pullback entries. Um, and so that's really my style of trading. I, I like that, ver you know, in terms of, it's a really clearly defined risk. Uh, Sounds like Brian Shannon is a, 
big influence on your trading. Yeah, I really, I really do times. like his his style of trading, um, so to speak. Um, and and honestly, he was introduced to me via the TrendSpider platform. Um, right. You know, the guys at okay. TrendSpider really work with him. Uh, they were the first platform, I believe, to get this automated anchored view app onto uh, onto the platform. And now it seems like everybody is following suit. Uh, but yeah, um, I don't you know, have a mentor, so to speak. Um, and in fact, you know, when you ask me questions about what books I've read, um, I'm actually not a big reader of books in a sense. I'm more of a visual learner. Uh, as a designer, uh, what I yeah. see in front of me is really uh, how I learn. Um, but when it comes to books, I, I'm a really big proponent of Trading in the Zone uh, by Mark Douglas, I think, okay. in terms of trading psychology. I think that's probably one of the books that's really helped me uh, fine tune my strategy and fine tune my my mental focus in terms of trade. You know, trying to leave my emotion my emotion on the side, my bias to the side, and and really just let the charts and technicals guide my trading. Um, how do you manage risk on your VWAP entries? Uh, well, what's great about Trend Spiders, they have this beautiful uh, you know risk management tool. So you know, if I were let's say to take a trade and I'm targeting this top here at you know, uh, 353, I would always use at a minimum a four to one risk to reward ratio. Um, when it comes to entry positions, I also use a like a five, 10, 15% um, entry system where, you know, if, if everything is, is beautiful, the, the stock is trending, the market is trending, the sector is trending, I, I may use 15% um, of, of my uh, trading account to uh, take a position and then work my way down to where we are today, which is probably five, even less than 5%, just due to the volatility, um, you know, what's going on this week with earnings, and then obviously next week having the election coming in. So we've been advising our members, uh, you know, sitting on your hands, cash is a position as well. Uh, you don't need to trade the chop, as you can see. We, we've been having these pop-ups in the morning, and then it's just flat chop for the rest of the day. So it's not really fun to trade. Um, so, you know, if you're well, it's not fun really... for me, this week. <laughs> um, but you know, for, for those that are not well versed in the market and, and don't know how to trade, uh, the chop, uh, it's definitely better to, to sit on your hands and wait for those ideal setups. And there are definitely hidden gems in the market. Uh, there are things that are moving relative to, uh, to the general market. So yeah, like the VIX. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. Popped so, over I mean, 40 uh... yesterday. Yeah, the breakout at 30 was a pretty good signal that you could take the downside a little more seriously than prior to the VIX breakout, in my Absolutely. extremely accurate and humble opinion. So um, are, is S&Ps uh, your main instrument for trading, or do you have some views of some other things going into the election? I understand, and it makes completely sense, uh, makes sense. That what's important into the election is not the return on capital, but the return of capital. Right. So, um, what kind of things are uh, you looking at market-wise to react to the reaction of the election? So, one thing that I do, I look for uh, comparisons to um, comparisons to spy. So, for instance, uh, EEM emerging markets uh, is breaking out relative to SPY. So I'm looking for uh, these uh, indexes and, and seeing what is, go what is outperforming SPY, what is relative to SPY. So you can see, you know, emerging markets is breaking out of a downtrend versus SPY. What wow. is emerging markets made up? You know, Alibaba, Tencent. So Asian stocks have really been running. So um, Alibaba is something that I've been watching uh, at 310. We did have a breakout and, and a pullback. So this is one of my strategies that I, uh, that I use in terms of trying to find relative strength in the market versus SPY. And as you can see, I have most of my indexes, you know, XLF, uh, I think last week was breaking out. I think it was a, bit, a little bit of a false breakout. And I will go down all of my different indexes to see where can I find strength in the market. And when I you find that, that strength, the, this uh, EEM uh, breakout is a little surprising in the face of dollar strength we've had this week. Don't right. you think? I, you know, I um, don't pay too much attention to currency. I'm not a I'm not a currency trader. So for me, it's a, it's a little bit foreign in that respect. But um, I know that's that's kind of your forte. So I would certainly 
you know, lean on you for, for that, for that expertise? Well, a strong dollar because a lot of emerging economies have their debt denominated in dollar. A strong, uh, stronger dollar makes it harder to service. Usually, pressures emerging markets. But you're, we're getting a breakout with the dollar turning up this week. Actually, the dollar broke out. So right. uh, that, to me, is a real um, significant sign of relative strength. When when a market can perform with headwinds. You just imagine what it could do with a tailwind and a weaker dollar would be a tailwind right. for emerging markets. So right. just just an observation. Interesting. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, going going back to that strategy and looking to see, you know, what what uh, funds and, and what indexes are performing relative to SPY, I'll then I'll then drill down and see, you know, what what is looking pretty good. And so obviously BABA is one of the biggest holdings for EEM. Talking about drilling down as a swing trader, I'm generally charting uh, from the top down weekly, daily, and I'll go down to my 65 minute. And then based on my 65 minute, you can see with Baba, we are consolidating in a volume shelf right here. And as you can see, a lot of times when I see these volume shelves, they tend to act as launching pads. So when I, uh, I anchor down, and sometimes it's a little tough to grab that. There we go. I anchor down. No, to I, my previous I have a low. question, Danny. Um, yes. You know, a lot of people use a standard TF. How do you come up with sixty-five minutes as a well, time frame to use? Uh, love to go back to this, uh, Brian Shannon. You know, it's oh, uh, the okay. sixty-five minute. He's again another proponent of the sixty-five minute uh, time frame. Uh, if, when you go to a sixty minute, it doesn't divide equally into your. Uh, into your uh, day time frame, so you get an unequal amount of candles on the sixty minute within a day. Uh, oh, with the sixty five minute, you get an equal amount. So each candle has equal representation on the chart versus a sixty minute. Oh, okay, I learned something today, yeah. and I, I have another interview coming up with Brian. Um, I'm going to ask him for a uh, autographed eight by ten glossy to send to you. Oh, so fantastic. You could, you could have his picture next to Please, year. please tell him I said hello. We, okay. uh, we do follow each other in chat uh, from time to time uh, okay. on, uh, on Twitter. So yeah, that's a um, pearl, 65 minutes. All right. Yeah. And so I use, I also like to use the 821 uh, EMAs on the 65 minute. Um, I use it as a crossover signal uh, to get ready. You know, a potential move is coming. You could see on Baba here. Down at 270, we had an 821 crossover. My entry would have been over the previous high right here. So obviously we get an entry and obviously we're moving back up. And so, you know, that's what I do. I, I don't really, for my swing trades, I don't really go lower than the 65. The 65 uh, minute time frame is really my trigger time frame for okay. an entry. Uh, and so you could see on, on Baba here, I'm looking at 310 as my, uh, as my entry, you could see when we ran up, we had a flat top here and we had some false breakouts. Uh, so I'm just looking for that true breakout like we had here. I also use Fibonacci extensions. So from a previous swing high here to swing low here, my 1618 is always gonna be my target. So I did take this 310 breakout trade last week and sold into the 1618 or excuse me, earlier this week. And then now I'm just waiting again. We did have a false breakout Baba following the markets, and but we're back in our consolidation zone. We're back in our volume shelf. So as long as we hold this shelf, again, a very clearly defined trade. Uh, over 310 is my entry. My stop loss would be under the 1272 Fib extension here at 307. And then, um, you know, it's about a three to one risk to reward ratio right back up to that 618, uh, 1618 extension. At about Does the gap down mean anything to you? Because, you know, I know a lot of people that haven't traded for a long time, especially FX traders, really aren't familiar with different type of gaps. Uh, most uh, traders uh, think every gap has to be filled, which is a no. Um, I, but in fact, this type of setup, I actually like, I like these, um, these gap down island reversals going back to uh, Bulkowski. So you had that gap down, you had a nice rounded bottom right at support. Yeah, it's here. not an island because it didn't gap up. So Correct. to truly have an island, you needed a gap on the left side of the gap on the right side. Say, I'll say that you know one more I mean? time. Say that All right, one more time. To, to really have an island, you needed it to gap up first before it gapped down. I see. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. I mean, that's classic Edwards and McGee, but gotcha. you know. 
it's so, but I can a see it's very similar types of, of movements here. You see it had a slight gap down here, rounded bottom, yeah. came back up. And this is what I, I like to play these gap down, rounded bottom plays. Yeah. Um, they tend to work out pretty well. Again, The important gap was risk. all the way back in October. Uh, uh, that uh, was a breakaway gap. Yes. Yeah. And, and that you know, obviously so. sent us off. And that also gave me right after my uh, EMA crossover here. So my entry yeah. would have been here. And I would have right. rode the wave all the way up to right about here when we have this cross under. I have a, a slightly better way to uh, exit these trades. It's more of a five under the eight. So I would have gotten out here. But if you would have measured that trade, it's it's a pretty decent trade. You know, over the course of, uh, let's look, 16 days, it's a 12% trade. So not not too bad. You know, um, you answered my question. Uh, you know, my everyone has weaknesses. Mine is... Yes. Uh, holding till targets. So right. you use these um, moving averages, you'll stay with the trade until you get across once it uh, is moving in your direction. Either that or sometimes my early signal to get out is if price runs too high off my 20 simple moving average on the daily. If yeah. I get a move like this here, where the, you know, let's say it's, it's you know, this gap or the, this run up here, is almost 11% over my 20 simple moving average. I'll look at this for a potential exit. Uh, something that are I'm you all in, all out, Danny, or do you piece in, piece out? It depends on the stock. It depends on the movement. It depends on what my target is, um, okay. and depends on the time frame that I'm holding. Uh, if it's a shorter term trade, I'm all in. If it is a, uh, in my style of trading, if it's a swing trade that I'm looking to hold. For a bit, uh, I may compound over key resistance levels. Um, so it, it, you know, it, it's it, it really will depend on on my on my outlook, and especially now, uh, I'm I'm taking less risk, so I'm probably not not all not all in. Maybe maybe I'll take a twenty five percent of my max position on an entry, uh, and then take it from there. Okay. Um... Uh, Raj is asking for a chart on Reliance. He says it's in your portfolio. Reliance. What's the ticker? I, I don't know. I'm not familiar with that. Okay. He's not familiar with that, Raj. What's the symbol? Apple, you know what? If you're not familiar with it, forget it. It's okay. I, it, you know, for me, I'm not a, I'm not a fundamentals trader, so I can look yeah. at any chart and dissect it, you know, within a minute. Yeah. So if he wants to give me the ticker, I'm happy to take a quick Do you ever uh, cover up the title of the chart so you don't have a bias? Um, That's interesting. No, I've that? never done that. I've okay, never done I that. Tell pe I tell people to do that. You know, some people have uh, bias to like only want to be long gold or only right. want to be short S&Ps and uh, if you cover up the title and just look at the candles, uh, you'd be amazed how uh, that's that's interesting. I'll definitely do that. Um, I, I mean, actually I'm, have a I have a rule yeah. that I follow. Uh, I I never marry stocks. I yeah. only date I only date them. Sometimes we go steady for a little while. But never uh, but I have engaged. No problem breaking it up. Okay, you are really, uh, you know, a misogynist in the market. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so Brian, why don't you take this time to, I know you have a business model where um, you mentor people and teach them. I went to uh, one of your websites, so maybe you want to uh, tell our audience today and those that will see the video the best way to get a hold of you and follow you sure. and contact you. Sure. Well, um, obviously on Twitter, um, uh, at the the pup of Wall Street, uh, that's always the best way to to get to me. Um, I do have a, a trading room. We have about uh, 275 members uh, where we're more of a teaching platform. We do give signals for uh, day trades, uh, scalps, and swing trades. I obviously run the swing uh, swing trade portion of the, of the room. Uh, but we're more of an education forward platform. It's Our Trading Edge. Uh, the website is OurTradingEdge.com. And uh, basically, we're an education forward platform. So we'll have uh, trainings Tuesdays and Thursdays. Actually, today is my day to do my training from 4.15 to 5.15. It's always an hour long class. Uh, I'll generally have a topic that I'll review. We'll review charts and uh, open it up to the floor to questions. Um, and then outside of that, um, you know, through my journey, I've I've come across a lot of traders that had 
the very same issues I had in my trading journey. And uh, being a business owner and, and an educator uh, in my field, I thought it would be great to kind of give back a little bit of the knowledge that I've, I've garnered over the last uh, couple of years. And so um, I opened it up to, to my uh, Twitter followers. And I said, listen, if there is anybody out there that uh, needs help, uh, that wants somebody that they can they can lean on when they have questions about charts, about you know trading psychology, about anything market related or anything not market related. Uh, I'm here, and so um, it's been actually a, a very interesting journey. I've been doing it for about three or four months now, and I've actually discovered a lot about myself as a trader through this process. So it, it's been yeah. cathartic in that sense, uh, yeah. but also very beneficial to meet other traders to to help them along in their journey. Uh, because I think, like you said, trading, you know, it, it's a lonely, it's a lonely journey and doing it by yourself. Uh, you're only going to get so far uh, unless you have somebody there to help guide you and answer questions along the way. And so uh, it's been, it's been really a, a wonderful journey for me, not only on the trading side, but also on the mentoring side. I'm lonely. I'm <laughs> Mr. Lonely. I've got nobody to call on the phone. So uh, <laughs> and it's anyway, amazing uh, with Zoom here. I mean, you could just, uh, you know, I, I chat uh, with people all over the world. It's a beautiful thing. You know what happens to people that survive 25 minutes with me, Danny? What's that? Any idea? Uh, you, you've become, like it or not, my trading warrior brother. Good. I love it. Huh? Okay, we we can never have uh, we can never have uh, too many of those. And uh, you know, and I wish you continued uh, success and um, and in your journey in your own account and helping others, and that you and your loved ones remain untouched during this wave that we have going on here in the U.S. And uh, was great meeting you. I Same appreciate here. your and, time, and I wish you and your and yours the the very uh, the very best as well. Okay, everyone, Danny Naz at the pup on wall street and i tell you what i think this guy is housebroken all right uh, i hope so <laughs> uh, you like that one man you, you, i hope so uh, i love it uh, that that's Dan, right up my alley the pup on is... wall street is housebroken so uh you could you know invite him into your house into your <laughs> webinars he, he's okay now so but I do Danny, like good food so you know like i said i live in brooklyn so i'm used to getting that good that good that good puppy chow it was great meeting you, Danny. Same Good here, Dale. Take care. All right, Pleasure. buddy. Thank you. Thank All you. right, everyone. That's a wrap for our session today. And uh, we'll see everyone for TGIF. Remember, don't just count your pips. Count your blessings. Adios. You're welcome, Monica, Raj, Anise, Tom. You're very welcome. Yeah, we like to have some fun in here too, right? I'm so Chicago. Uh, I miss home. Good food and inviting. Okay, sayonara. I do miss Chicago. I, I would love an Italian beef sandwich if you guys could mail one to me from Chicago. And or, I'll see uh, every how about a deep dish from Lou Malnati's? Oh, okay. Stop it. <laughs> it's, it's only six thirty here and on the left coast, so it's never too early for pizza. Uh, all right, all right, Danny. Thank you, buddy. Take care, bud. All right. See everyone. Adios.